CommitToWealth.com. Creating a legacy by committing to real estate wealth. Commit to Wealth Nation, welcome to the Commit to Wealth Podcast. This is your host, Juan Vargas, to bring you another great guest. You know, that our job here on the show is to always, you know, try to have the, the best guests possible, the guys that can really bring some value. And, you know, we are not going to fill you here today. So uh, today we have Gary Boomershine, uh, a little bit about him. He, is, he has a background in, in technology, having been based in California in Silicon Valley. He's the founder of realestateinvestor.com and REI Vault, a three-time Inc. 5000 company and investment platform created to help investors systemize and automate to grow their real estate businesses by using shared systems and managed marketing services. So with that short intro, Gary, I want to welcome you to the show. Ah, it's great to be here, Juan. <laughs> Hey, it's it's a pleasure to have you here on. Um, so as I said, you know that was a short intro. You know, so I, I want you to tell us a little bit more about your background. Tell us who you are. Um, you know, and and kind of give us the whole deep a deep dive there. Yeah, I'm. I uh, grew up in in Silicon Valley. I, I I'm outside San Francisco, probably 30 minutes, and grew up in a family. I <clears throat> grew up in a family real estate entrepreneurial uh, family, I should say. We had a uh, real estate brokerage in what's called the Oakland Hills. And uh, mm -hmm. all of us kids, got. I, I was a licensed agent turning 18, like literally three weeks after turning 18, I had my real estate license. And um, we were also buying uh, deals back then, a lot of creative uh, properties and apartments and single family properties. So really had a background in that. I, uh, I From a career perspective though, I, I had a really good mentor, senior guy from, uh, uh, large company. And he basically said, Gary, the future is technology. So I got a computer engineering degree from UC Davis long, long time ago and uh, did the Silicon Valley thing. Worked for one of the largest technology consulting firms in the world, a company called Accenture. And um, it was really awesome experience. And then I did, I moved into, uh, into technology sales, high end, you know, million to $5 million dollar uh, enterprise software sales. I did four technology startups. And it was in 2004, we lived through the whole dot com ups and downs. And my mm -hmm. wife said, 2004 said, you know what, let's get back to what we know. And because we, you know, the, the whole stock market of buying Silicon Valley tech stocks, it was like, it was just like an emotional roller coaster ride and, and uh, uh, you know, high stakes gambling. So we're like, mm -hmm. let's go back to brick and mortar. And so 2004, I plunged in and uh, did real estate full time. And it's been awesome. I've done a lot of transactions. I've done apartments. I've done land deals. Um, right now, I'm in four markets. I'm a little opportunistic. I do a lot of lending. And we're also doing a lot of stuff in the single family side. So I'm probably more of a single, fam a single family expert than I am multifamily. Um, so I'll give that to your audience. Um, I will say <clears throat> I run a company, a very large company. Well, in our space, it's mm -hmm. we're the largest marketer uh, for real estate agents and investors in the country. We're both agents and investors. We've done over 40 million pieces of direct mail. Uh, we've wow. done over well over a million outbound seller calls. And I've got a large phone team that uh, and a team that basically uh, mines data finds uh, targeted properties. We do a massive amount of direct mail, cold calling, outbound text messaging, and then uh, and generate the leads for about 300, 250 to 300 uh, experienced agents and investors. But more importantly, I've got the systems and I've got the phone team that then does all the lead mining and lead refining uh, and all the phone follow-up and screening and appointment scheduling. So our group of people our investors are looking to buy properties as opposed to being technology and marketers. And so we're, we're an extension of that team and uh, we're really good at it. So we do marketing and then all the phone work and primarily in single family. I know we'll talk today about how to make this work and it does doing direct mail or any of this capability apply for apartments and multifamily and other larger types of property mm -hmm. projects. And it absolutely does, but there's some caveats. Uh, I, I, I think we've probably mailed, I don't know, three or 4 million pieces for uh, sort of maybe more for apartments. So we've definitely cracked the code on what, what, what people should know if they wanted to go after off market deals. Got it. Yeah, no, it's a lot of good information and I appreciate you sharing yeah. your, your background. 
Um, yeah, that company, that company, by the way, just as a note, is realestateinvestor.com. A lot of us mm-hmm. know us as REI Vault. And um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I'm definitely got 120 people working for me. And it was finally when I actually got a couple of high horsepower CO, I've got an integrator COO and uh, I've passed over operations. So it's freed me up to, you know, do to enjoy life, like it. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy life, take it off to Maui in a couple of weeks and there you go to Tulum. And I love, I love real estate. It gives us the flexibility of not being a, a slave to a, a company, right? Yeah, no, you're you're 100 accurate on that. Um, so yeah, I love it. I mean, it's it sounds like you know it's it's a strong company. It sounds like you guys know exactly what you, you're doing. Um, you know, and and there's a lot of benefits to having investors work directly with you guys, right? Because you know the truth is, you know, a lot of people that get into the space, you know, we're not strong in in systemizing, right? Or we're not strong in marketing, or we're not, you know, we just don't have the time to do everything, right? But you know, the the kind of the package that you guys bring to the table is is being able to um, help the guys automate those kind of items, right? And, and uh, you know, you're, you're kind of, you know, paying for a service that, that's going to be beneficial to you in the long run, right? So I really like it. And as you mentioned, you guys focus a lot on the single family side, but, you know, it, one of the main things that we want to talk about here today is, is how you can use your system. Uh, we know it works already in, in single family side, right? And you touched on it a little bit on the multifamily side, but, you know, how, how exactly can somebody get started, you know, if they want to maybe send like direct mail or, or, or get some, some, uh, some pieces, you know, going out there to some of these owners, you know, how, what would be the first step and, and how would it work for them? Yeah. You know, first and foremost, I don't think direct mail is the number one way to target especially large multifamily, um, 25 units and less, uh, direct mail is fantastic. Cold calling mm-hmm. and text messaging, fantastic. And I'll talk about that. But if you're going after the larger uh, apartments, uh, you know, LoopNet and syndications and, um, and you're working go with, with brokers, brokers is definitely, yeah. definitely the way to go. Sure. And, and however, as a caveat, some of the best deals are going to be these off-market deals. These are deals that are really not listed on the market. These are apartments that have been inherited or maybe have some distressed situations. They're probably, you know, owned for a long, long time. That is definitely, you know, off-market means they're not listed, right? They've not actually physically listed. And so it's the diamond in the rough. And usually you're, you, you can go direct to the seller. Now, here's the caveat. What we have found on direct mail, cold calling, any of this stuff, um, there is a block. When you go to public record and you pull the apartments, um, typically when you mail to the mailing address, it's going to the property manager. And all of it goes right into the garbage because when you send to a property manager, they're going to lose their job, right? (laughs) Yeah, they're not going to want to, they're not going to want to, you know, send that to the the owner, right? And their job is to maintain their job and, you know, keep their job and, you know, keep it performing. They're not trying to right. sell the property. So here's, yeah, I, we get so, it. So mm-hmm. Exactly. So here's the, here's the capability. Basically, you target where you want in the country and the type of product, type of uh, apartment, you know, size, location, demographics. Uh, that's typically fairly easy to do. And I can, I'd be happy to walk through that. We have a formula. We're really, really good. One of the things we do is we, we actually pull mailing lists um, we've got a proprietary algorithm of what, how we're actually finding that data just because we've been doing it for so long. Um, we've got two mailing lists that are, that we actually use for cold calling. It's pretty, pretty unique in the country. Uh, and, and, and just as a caveat on that inherited properties, um, that are almost free and clear. It's a huge list for single family. There's 127 million properties on public record around the country and 18 million of these are the ones that we have been finding that are the gold mines for single family. Um, it would apply the same to apartments. Then the next step is somebody has to go and do the research because most of these LLCs and trusts need to be researched. And um, that's, that's a little bit of a manual effort. Well worth it. So somebody could take that list. You've got a targeted list of maybe 2000 properties and then for each of them, you're going out and you're finding the LLC and you're finding the, uh, the ownership and the, the true address of the LLC or entity. And then you start marketing that way. And that definitely would produce some good fruits. In terms of cost, 
you know, you could spend anywhere from an average of 2000 to, I don't know, even $10,000 in marketing per deal. But imagine if you could actually spend, let's just go on the high side of $10,000 in marketing and uh, generates enough leads to buy one apartment that you're getting off market with no agent. You're typically, those types of deals, if you're looking for things like owner financing and, and cre creativity, those are the, that's definitely the way to go. Yeah. And, and I, just to, just to kind of cut you off right there, 10,000 for, for buying an apartment building, you know, despite it being, you know, a 10 or 20 or 25 unit, I mean, that's, that's a drop in the bucket, you know, 10,000 yeah. and you get uh, you know, possibly a 2 million, 3 million, whatever, you know, uh, dollar property. I mean, that's so worth it. You know, like I'd pay that all day long. You know, if, if I knew yeah. that, I, you know, I had the opportunity to, to, to get a, a deal that's off market. You know, and this is interesting because I, we, we typically service the more experienced, uh, real estate business operators. I wouldn't even call them investors. You know, Warren Buffett calls an investor somebody that has money and they buy and they hold, right? They take all, advantage, all the advantages of real estate and then ultimately they're 1031. That's the definition of building long-term wealth and equity, the tax advantages, right? That's, that's somebody that has money. There's a lot of people that I service that are more business operators. These are people that are buying, fixing, flipping, wholesaling. That's a business. And, um, and, and I do that too, just because it's fruitful and you can definitely automate it, but all businesses need a CEO, right? And if you're mm -hmm. a CEO doing $10 an hour work and you're like pulling mailing lists and trying to figure out and licking stamps and putting postcards <laughs> in the mail, it's like, first and foremost, you, you know, you shouldn't even be in this business because it's not scalable. It doesn't, not in this market, it's too competitive. So you really, if you're going to go and do direct mail or off market, you really want to have the right systems and the right team of expertise. And it, marketing is a return on investment. You spend a dollar, you know, a period of time later, three, four, five months on average, uh, produces, a, you know, a return. It's like going to the bank and taking a dollar bill and turning it in for a, a, a $10 bill or a hundred dollar bill, right? Mm -hmm. Three months mm -hmm. later. People, if they knew that they could go to the bank, drop a, a dollar bill in, and then four months later, the bank is going to give them a crisp $100 bill, right? Or a year later, they'd get a crisp $100 bill. People would be coming with wheelbarrows. Direct mail marketing is the same way. And a lot of people, they look at it as a cost. It, it is a return on investment. Um, and it's probably one of the highest return on investments in any industry, right? Uh, in terms of real estate. So I, I like the direct mail. Uh, cold calling capability for finding apartments, but it is for the more seasoned professionals. Uh, somebody's looking for, you know, one or two apartments, three apartments, even a year. You know, the way to do it is find a great broker, a bunch of great brokers that, and, and, and have them go out and do all the, the you know, the heavy lifting. Yeah, so so there's a there's a big difference in in trying to acquire and and this is kind of reiterating what you you said earlier, um you know if you're looking for like a fifty unit a hundred unit a two hundred unit you're not gonna find these uh, are highly unlikely to find these through direct mail that's just it's 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 almost they they almost don't exist right because these guys already have those relationships built um with with the brokers the owners have the relationships built with the brokers and and they're going to work together right so um and now not to mention they're more more sophisticated they're going to sell it to another buyer who who's someone like them or or even more experienced than than them right yeah um yeah. so the the strategy for somebody looking to to use something like this right um a system like this is to to make sure that you're looking for for the smaller deals and, and you know a lot of my audience, you know, they are looking for the smaller deals. They're looking for maybe not, not get to that 100 unit, that 200 unit, but they're looking for that, that first 10 unit, that 20 unit or whatever, right? Um, because they want to want to find a property that kind of fits what they're looking for, fits them for a long-term hold. Um, it's something that they can buy for their family and, and, and keep it for a long time, like I said. So, um, you know, which is, which is great. So, you know, you said it, it costs, you know, on average, uh, 10 grand, you know, to, to get a list going and to, to, to get all that going. Right. So, you know, what, what are the steps beyond that? You know, do you, can you share a little bit more information beyond that, beyond the, the, the marketing costs? Um, yeah. you know, so there's, there's, um, <clears throat> going direct to a seller. First and foremost, you have to find the targeted, you know, the suspects, the targeted list, and that's public record data. It's not hard mm -hmm. to find. Um, CoreLogic is an example. 
uh, or first American. Actually, that that's where the data starts. It's it's county assessor, county recorder. There's also some superior court um, data that's actually super useful. Um, that that gets refined. So you basically are are building your targets. Um, there's a lot to that, by the way. You just don't you know go out to a list source and say, oh, show me all the apartments. That there's a lot more to find. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a data component. And then it's the right marketing piece uh, to get the, the the seller to call, and and we've got that. That's that's a, that's an easy one. Uh, we use what's called a blind copy. It's a Dan Kennedy approach, um, very similar to what we would use for single family. Um, you're going to have to take the list, and it has to actually then be researched. And I wouldn't even do direct mail unless you were going to actually do this step. This is, I would say, 99% of the people around the country that do direct mail for apartments, they don't do this. So you want to be 1%. The harder it is to find these nuggets, the, the better it is. So somebody manually goes and researches, and, and so now you've got your targeted list, and then you start uh, stepping through and, and sending out the marketing. Now, the real work, that's the first part. The, the, the next step is what we call lead mining and lead refining. And it's almost like a diamond mine, right? If, if you have diamonds at a jewelry store and they're $10,000 to $50,000 beautiful diamond rings, it doesn't start in the jewelry store. It starts in a mine, right, that somebody like has to go with a pickaxe, right, in South Africa or wherever. And so you got to go to the, to the mine. Somebody's got to go do the digging and the heavy lifting. And then there's also, you know, taking those unpolished rocks once you have them out of the mine and then somebody has to shine them and they have to cut them with precision, right? So there's a, a system and a follow-up and a screening process as the, as the sellers come in, because the, the, the sellers are going to call of these properties, and you're going to find good leads, you're going to find bad leads and ugly leads. You're going to have some people who are going to mm -hmm. like scream and yell and say, don't ever. That, some of the best <laughs> leads are those. Some of the best ones are the ugly ones, by the way. Um, they're not going to be a seller says, hey, uh, yeah, I'm ready to sell. It's going to be a process of somebody calling, text messaging. There's a massive amount of follow-up. And that, by the way, our team does that. That's, that's, the, that's the heavy lifting. Uh, on average, it takes five to 12 interactions, follow-up interactions with a seller to get a yes. And, and, and less than 10% of anybody in this entire business ever follows up more than twice. And I repeat that. So most people, because a lot of people are three feet from gold and they'll do direct mail and it's like, oh, it doesn't work. It's like, no, you actually just didn't, you didn't have the formula uh, set up properly. So that's why. So I can you repeat that one more time? You, you said 12 times, 12 times of uh, like on, points of contact. On, so, so it typically will cost about, it could be anywhere from 40 for apartments. It's going to be 40, $40 to maybe $70 per lead generated. You're going to spend, that's the cost of marketing to get the seller to put up their hand and respond. Mm -hmm. 40, 40 to $70. It's 20 to $40 for single family. It's going to be closer to uh, 40 to $70 to get the seller to put up their hand. Okay. Now, most of those, oh, there's not, most of those are not going to be ready sellers that are ready to close that day. For sure. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes an average of five to 12 interactions and follow ups over a, a series of months in order to get the seller finally ready to go. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to do that work. And by the way, it'll cost 40 to $70 to get the lead. And then it's pennies to less than a dollar to do all that follow up. You just have somebody else like us, realestateinvestor.com, to do that follow up work. Does that make sense? That makes in sense. Most, so in most businesses in America and frankly all over the world, they have a marketing team and then they have what's called ISAs. That's inside sales agents. This is an inside sales team that does nothing but all the phone, you know, follow up work, right? And then they have outside sales guys that then go out and actually do the, the deals. So it's the same thing. And if you've got somebody that wants to buy apartments and they're doing all the work, they're doing all the marketing and all the inside sales work, they're not going to have, they won't make any money because they won't have enough time to do it. You know, you've got, a, it's a full-time job <laughs> for probably two people at $3, $4 an hour. So if you got an apartment guy, you know, that's trying to make a million dollars a year and buy three or four apartments, and then they're doing all this work, you can kind of see that there's a problem.
Makes yeah, sense. so th- that's that's one of the reasons why you you go to somebody like like yourself, like like your your team, because you're able to. I mean, your team is gonna be doing those, those follow ups that that you, we otherwise wouldn't want to. And and so for the average person, you know, like you said earlier, we reach out, we'll, we'll follow up with them maybe once or twice. Uh, but that's a lot of times, and most of the time, that's not enough. You know, there's gotta be yeah. the follow up. You know, the continuing the continuous. Um, rapport building type of uh, calls and, and text messages and emails or whatever it takes to be able to get them to say, okay, I, I'm ready now. I, I feel that I can trust you guys. You know, let, let's make something happen now. And, and yeah. like I said, you know, most of us are not salespeople. We're not, we're not trained to be able to, to talk to somebody and, and, you know, push them to, to want to sell. And, and you know, that's one of the benefits to, to going with a, a company that helps you um, t- take care of those steps for you. It's kind of like a package that, that you can use. Right. So, yeah. I'm, I'm and, really that, like that. and that, and that's actually why, you know, especially for your listeners, people that are going and looking for apartments, you know, the best way to go is just go loop net and brokers. Um, and there's syndications out there. You could actually piggyback on on somebody that's already doing this. Uh, there are people that are finding these deals. There's also wholesalers that mm-hmm. are finding apartments, and they're you know willing for a finder's fee, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there's somebody out there doing all this marketing, and then they find a project, and and uh, and they're going to take some upside. That's the best way, the fastest way to the money. Uh, but then if you are more full time and you're looking for you know, multiple properties and you want another niche than doing direct mail or going after the off market. You know, this is what realtors do, right? A lot of the realtors have to do what's called farming and they're actually, you know, farming and they're interacting with the sellers. So there's a lot, right? You have a a broker that might work with the seller for 10 years before they get the apartment deal, like all that relationship building. So like, yeah, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. And what we do for going out off market is we're actually cutting out all of that and going direct to the seller and uh, definitely worked. You know, if you could actually say, Oh, I'm going to spend, I'm going to write a check for $10,000 and four months later, I'm going to have this amazing apartment deal. Um, you know, if you follow the right formula, that's pretty good return on investment. It definitely is. And, you know, I think it's well worth it. You know, if, if you can be able to acquire a property, you know, that, that's going to be, like I said earlier, a drop in the bucket. You know, you're not even going to think about that. You know, you would do that so many times over. You know, I really do believe that. So, okay. Well, Gary, I think it's time for our Nuggets of Wealth. Um, and uh, these are quick questions that I ask every single guest. And hopefully they are able to help out my audience. Um, what is a good tool, source, or platform that you use daily that can really be beneficial for, for others as well. Yeah, we, uh, well, I've, I've got a large team. I've got a large team in India, a large team in the Philippines and in Mexico, and uh, we're heavy on Slack. So Slack's a, a fantastic tool. Uh, we use Zoom. These are all t- tools that are pretty much free. I think as a, as a, um, as a business owner, like I'm a high visionary on the, uh, on the traction quadrant. I really like using a tool called Workflowy. Mm-hmm. So Workflowy is a free tool that allows me, I use it, it's like an outlining tool. Some people like mind mapping, my brain wraps around, um, you know, everything. If I'm, if I'm working on something and I want to pass something to somebody on my team, I'll, I'll, I'll map it up in five minutes in Workflowy. That's, that's, been a, that's been a tool. Another tool that I use, this is more... This is from a CEO coach. I have four CEO coaches that, that uh, I'm a huge guy for believing in having coaches, being in high level, high end masterminds and uh, follow traction. But um, I do a, follow a, a system called 5103. I wake up mm-hmm. at five in the morning. I push out my day until two. So I'm off limits. So it gives me five personal hours every day. Um, I journal and read scripture and plan my one thing that I'm going to do to move the marker in my business that's going to, you know, as a CEO. And then the three is the three hours that I'm actually going to work in the business as a CEO. And, uh, and that's it. So, so the rest of the time I should be able to have a lot of fun. And that has wow. made a, that's made a huge, huge difference. Uh, Cause I think it's easy to, to go from corporate America to trying to basically be a real estate entrepreneur and then create the environment that we came from, right? Except now we're the boss or we might've hated working for a boss. So that's really, that's been a fundamental change for me. That's what I would call a system. 
Got it. Got it. Um, what was the biggest mistake you ever made like in business and what did you learn from it? Well, oh man, I've, I've, I've learned, I've had lots of mistakes. I learn more from the mistakes than I do from the wins. Um, I'll, I'll tell you one that comes to mind. I lost a monster commercial building that would have been an absolute complete home run. That would have been a, uh, that would have been a $10 million uh, paycheck. And I brought a partner in. It was a deal here in uh, California, um, actually close to Berkeley a, f- a few years ago. And it needed, a, it needed 800. I had owner financing. It was a distress deal. I had it all approved. The owner was going to finance it, zero interest. I mean, it was a smoking deal. It needed an $800,000 HVAC put into this building. It was a uh, 10 story bu- commercial building. And so I brought in a partner and found out at the 11th hour, I didn't do my research on him. And the FBI was actually, he was under indictment for all kinds of fraud and securities fraud. And, and, uh, and I had to back out of the deal. My attorney basically had me back out of the deal. So that, you know, do your, do your due diligence on partners. Wow. Mm-hmm. That would be number one. Um, be in unity with your part, your, your wife and your spouse. I've actually I found that uh, it's probably, I made so many decisions independently and I, I think I just turned 50. We've been married 25 years and I've realized, Hey, you know what? Making decisions with your partner and being in unity, even if, even if you, if you have to slow down has, has had massive blessings. So those are the two uh, lessons learned. Yeah. And, and that's a, those are two powerful ones as well. They're, they're very, very important and something that we don't necessarily think about every single day. Um, you know, it's easy just to get caught up in your own, you know, business and, and you're doing things and, you know, you don't ever seek, you know, you don't seek the advice of your significant other, which, you know, who's, who's along the ride with you. Right. So, and you kind of uh, tend to not uh, remember that every single day, but you got it. It's a good reminder for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where can you come to Wealth Nation? Go to contact you and find out more about you, you and what you're doing in your business. Yeah. You know, uh, real estate investor.com is a great place. Um, you can, that, that we have most of kind of what we do and who our team is, uh, that, that would be a great place. I, I'm launching an advanced sales training uh, program and certification program. This is, uh, this is it's, it's, it's on solution selling. This has been a, a big need. So there'll be some information around that coming out uh, also on realestateinvestor.com almost within a couple of weeks of launching that. And uh, it's a four-week program, but it's something that a lot of people uh, have been asking for from me. Um, I'm on Instagram, Gary Boomershine, and uh, I'm on Facebook, and I'm super active uh, with the community. So, yeah, feel free to reach out if there's anything I can do to help. And I speak at events all over the country um, on occasion. So if you heard me on this podcast, just let me know, and it would be really cool. Love Sounds this industry. Great. It's definitely this industry. I, I've learned a lot. I follow a lot of podcasts and, and, uh, and I'm in masterminds and I always get fired up having like-minded people. There's some really great people in this industry and, uh, that have shared, you know, their techniques with me. And so I love sharing the stuff that's worked for me back. For sure. For sure. Okay. Well, Gary, we really do appreciate you having you on, on, uh, the show and, uh, wish you continued success. Yeah, it was great, Juan. Thank you, and thank your loyal audience. CommitToWealth.com, creating a legacy by committing to real estate wealth.